what is the most important part of a man's dress? Some may say it is the blazer, some may say it is the hat, some may say it is the tie or the trouser or the suit or probably in the new age the accessories like rings or watch etc. But the answer universally is one. It is the suit. It is so important that it is told that if you have a bad pair of shoes or if you don't wear a proper suit, better to go around with your socks only or barefoot rather than wear a suit badly or a bad suit. How many times I have been at despair in interviews where people wear very brand new blazers and good suits but actual personality is given away by wearing a bad suit. So what is a good suit? A good suit is one which not only complements your sense of style, it gives the personality that you are a projection to the people who matter and at the same time it gives you comfort it also gives you a sense of elegance and sense of presence. Those were formally brought into manufacturing in the 16th century Europe. Before that, they were only some wood or some pieces of animal skin which were tied to the uh, feet uh, as people uh, walked or roamed around and ran around hunting and uh, doing things. Shoes are very important, not just because it is stylish, it is a statement of one's presence as I told you, but at the same time, because in a human life, you typically walk between 120,000 kilometers to 150,000 kilometers, out of which at least 60 to 70 percent you wear a suit. What are the different types of shoes? What are the colors of shoes? How much you should spend on a shoe? Which are the dress color combinations with a suit. What is the occasion? Is there something called a morning suit, evening suit, formal suit, informal suit? Some of it we'll try to discuss and for this I have gathered some of my suits which I have collected over a lifetime and we will uh, try to uh, explain these things in some greater detail. Dress suits or the suits which are formal in occasions that are important are mainly you know two or three types. Sue is either a laced one or without a lace. The laced ones are generally of two pieces like I am wearing or like this where the lower and the upper are stitched together. Sue's with a lace they can be divided into two or three categories. The first one is an Oxford Sue like this. An Oxford Sue is a plain dress Sue. It is ever elegant. It can be black or it can be brown and it, it can be of different shapes which we will explain. This one is a plain Oxford suit. As you can see there is nothing, there is one leather which goes from here to here and it makes the suit. As important as the suit is the sole. Sole typically should also be made out of leather and shoes invariably good shoes must be made out of leather. Now there is a craze of synthetic leather. Yes, they also give some kind of an elegant look but there is nothing like real leather. A good shoe must be manufactured within 14 days of the uh, leather being taken off the animal, live animal. They say it must fit as good as if you are feeling that there is only a socks around you. That is the sense of comfort that it must be giving. The second one is toed cap oxford. Toed cap oxford is where you know, the toe area has another layer of leather to give you comfort, to give durability to support the maximum impact that happens because of that extra piece of leather that comes into the shoe making has been a statement of style. For example, the cap toe could be something like a V, the cap toe could be something like a U or an extended open U or a little round shaped or the cap toe could be absolutely like a flat U. And Oxford Sioux uh, and Oxford remains the dressiest of shoes and it has survived probably two or three centuries of shoe making and shoe wearing and shoe as a fashion style. The next type of laced dress shoe is what is famously known as the brogue shoe. It has its origin in Scotland and Ireland where the stitching happened with a lot of holes. So this is a typical brogue shoe. The stitches are you know, we'll have punch holes and around which there will be double stitches. 
and the toe cap could be either pointed or it could be round like this. This could be formal, but this is also a dress suit. It is also worn in uh, dressy circles, dress, uh, in interviews, in board meetings, etc. But this is considered a little less formal as compared to, let us say, a typical cap to Oxford suit. Now, in this also, there is, there is, this is called a winged brogue. That means, as if uh, you, if you have seen a bird, this wing, it comes like this, like this. And this, the design comes beautifully around it. There are some uh, brogue shoes which are also made on plain Oxford type of shoes. Just designs are made and some dots are made like this. So this is called a plain brogue shoe. It is not a winged brogue shoe. The present uh, generation of a little senior executives uh, they are quite fond of something called slip-ons or in Europe they are called loafers. Loafers are three or four types. One is, is of course a plain loafer or plain slip-on which is, which is simple. You just slip your leg in and you wear and go. It is as good as a dress suit if your uh, trouser falls over this. It is very difficult to decipher whether there is a lace or there is no lace. And there is the second one, which is which is again a more comfortable but wide-bodied uh, loafer, and it is a slip-on also, but it has a wide tongue, or it protrudes to give more comfort towards the ankle area. So, and there are again style statements. For example, this shoe of mine, which is a uh, slip-on loafer, but it has a little bit of brogue around it. The most important American style is what is known as the tasseled loafer. Uh, you know, this tassel which is there, it is like the tassel of a lady's hair, which is there. It is again a slip-on, but it is considered classy and dressy. The last but not the least is called the monk strap. I don't have that shoe of mine here, so I am unable to show it to you, but I will try to show a picture of it. The monk strap has nothing to do with the monk, but it is it is like a strap goes and there is a buckle and it is also quite famous, especially I have seen, you know, very senior businessmen and uh, in the informal circuit, you wear the slippers with a monk strap. But, uh, what are the casual shoes? Casual shoes are uh, of different types. Many times when you go for outdoors, you wear something like a boot. A boot uh, is generally of uh, thicker leather and it, 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 has, uh, it has more durable uh, stitching around so that it doesn't come out with the wear and tear and uh, many times they have also ankle covers like a boot. And it's quite also popular that people wear suede uh, dress kind of shoes made of, uh, of suede leather. Having known these different kinds of uh, shoes that are there, let us discuss a little about uh, the maintenance and wearing of the shoes and matching of the shoes. A black shoe goes almost with everything. However, brown shoes are also considered elegant because with some of the colors like cream, like bees, like off-white, it is matched with the socks and the belt. It looks more elegant. So brown or black the most important thing about a shoe is the polish of it. In army it is called spit polish. That means wax mixed with some moisture, it must be applied and then it must be polished till it shines like glass. Even if you are not in army where the shoe polish determines your grade in passing out parades, a shoe which is well kept has to be polished well. Whether it is black, whether it is brown, whether it is suede, whether it is a boot, whether it is formal, whether it is a slip-on, whether it is a brogue, whether it is a cap-on. Second important thing is maintaining the heel. It is an absolute no-no to wear a heel which has been worn out. Today there are enough uh, number of uh, shops which do a good job of replacing the sole. Please do replace the sole and uh, take it to the vendors. Whenever there are any mends that are required in the shoe, spend as much as is required in doing a good mending to your shoes. And if you replace your sole, sole the shoe could last quite a long time. Lace should be changed periodically, lace should not be worn out and lace should also be applied with a little bit of wax to give it a sign. 
today uh, even in amazon and in flipkart leather shoelaces are available buy them they are very good they last well they look well and they give a good job in terms of keeping the suit tight socks go for good quality socks many times people wear good shoes but the socks are either not matching or they are old so the the elastic has given away so they wrinkle maybe you will have to iron the socks also last but not the least is that when to buy the shoe what is the time to buy the shoe and how much you should be spending on it the best time to buy the shoe is late in the evening when your feet has expanded the most if you buy a shoe at that time in morning also it will fit well and in the evening it will fit well and it will not bite your toe or your small toe how much you should be spending on a shoe the uh, rule that i prescribe is that how much you would have spent on a good blazer if your blazer budget is 5000 bucks please keep 5000 for a good pair of shoes if your blazer budget is 10000 depends on where you are if you are a youngster entering the life of corporates obviously you will not be willing to spend 10000 or 20000 but again this rule how much you spend on a blazer so much you spend on the suit and go for good makes i have some good makes for example this is a loak uh, this is a church this is a harris all these shoes have lasted me now close to 10 years 12 years and they keep on giving service so go for a good brand polish it well don't wear a slipper or don't wear a casual running shoe into the office although it may suit for people who are working in the film industry or in the software industry in general if you want to make a dress statement wear a proper pair of shoes thank you very much